Okay, so in this video, we're going to make a simple maze game. This will put everything we learnt last time into practice, as well as introduce the first person controller, a really useful prefab tool that comes with Ursina as a default. If we're going to have a maze game, the first thing we will need is a maze. To do this, let's head into Blender, and I'll put a link to this software in the description. All we need to do is create a plane, select it and then go into edit mode. From here we can right click and subdivide the plane, splitting it into smaller chunks. Once we switch the mode to display faces instead of points, we can just go round shift selecting each face to make up the walls of our maze. From here, press E and extrude these walls upwards as much as you want. We're almost done, but we just need to do this thing called UV unwrapping. It sounds complicated, and it definitely can be, but all it really means is taking your 3D shape and unfolding it, kind of like how you might unfold a cardboard box. This lets you lay out your 2D textures on your 3D shape correctly. While in edit mode, just press U and then click Smart UV Project. There are much neater ways of doing this, but for now, all we need to do is switch to UV edit mode up at the top, press A to select everything, S to scale everything, and then drag so each square is the same size as the background window. If you need to move it at all, press uh, G as the shortcut to do that. Once you are happy that it's all lined up, just save your file in the same folder as your project. Now we've got that done, we can start to create our game. To begin with, just set up your application like we did last time, with app equals Ursina, and then app.run at the bottom. We can then create our maze, where we set the model to the name of the maze we just saved. And set the texture to whatever we want really but I'm going to use the built-in brick texture. Finally, just so we can look around, we'll create an editor camera as well. If we want to actually walk around, we can use the prefab first person controller that I mentioned earlier. To do this, at the start of your code, type from controller import all and you use a, a star um, to show that. Then within our code, instead of the editor camera, we can type player equals first person controller, and then pass it a Y value, and let's say 100 for that, just to keep it above the maze to begin with. Try running it now, and you should notice that the player just falls through the floor and that the maze is tiny compared to our player. To fix both of these issues, we first need to set the maze's scale to something larger, and let's say uh, 20 for that. Then to make our first person controller treat it as a solid object, we need to provide it with a collider. The most common collider you will use is mesh, as it matches the shape of the model you see on the screen. You can also set this to box or set it to sphere to make the collision mesh each of those shapes respectively around your entity. If we try running this now, you should see that everything's starting to come together. We do still need to place the player at the starting position to begin with though. One way to work out where the player is meant to be is to print the player's position within an update function and then move the player manually to where you want it to start. Once we have printed out the coordinates we want, just set the player's position to those values initially. Finally, let's reset things when the player reaches an exit by removing our print statement, 
and replacing it with a check to see if the player's Y position is below zero. If it is, we reset the position. We're pretty much done now, but there are ways to improve it if you choose to do so. For example, we could add multiple levels. I'll start us off by storing a level attribute within our maze entity. Then we increase it by one every time the map resets. I'll let you work out the rest for yourself, but to give you a hint, it involves changing the maze model to something new each time you complete it. OK, so that's it for today. Next time we will try to expand this concept further and weaponize our player. This should be a really good opportunity to look at the camera UI, as well as starting to take our own key inputs. Thank you for watching, and as always, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.